Today we are replacing the wood decking on a Parker, basically a 5x8 or 6x8 utility trailer. A lot of the wood was already rotted through. You could see that was easy with a crowbar just to uh, break out. The boards that are a little stronger, I'm cutting along the, uh, the center joist. You can see this is the only place, at least on my trailer, that the wood pieces are connected. Most of these bolts are uh, rusted when I try to remove them. The tops broke off, so once the wood is gone, I can get them out with some PB Blaster and uh, Vice Grip. The wood goes into a, a C channel in the front, L channel along the sides, and another C channel along the back. So, once all the wood is gone, we'll get everything cleaned up. I'll give the undercarriage uh, a good coating of um, rust preventative spray paint, and uh, then I'll go buy new decking. On my trailer, uh, it's 53 and a half inches wide, so once you take the actual rough size, 2 by 10 by 8 and 2 by 8 by 8. Now, 8 feet is actually about an inch too long, so I'll have to trim them to fit in. Not exactly sure how we're going to get them to fit in. I'm thinking that we'll tuck one end in, lay a, uh, a bar, crowbar along this, this beam, and then put pressure on the other end till it's down in, and then pull the bar. See if we can't snap them in. There are no cut channels to, uh, to get these out. They're just wedged in there and very swollen from being wet, you can see. So, once I've got all these out, what I may need to do is in either this back C channel or in the front one, cut a, uh, I guess about a nine and a half inch section out of the top. That will allow me to lay the boards down in and then slide them over, slide them over, lay the last one in, and then I can either use a uh, weld on a piece, I could bolt on an L bracket that I could unbolt if I ever had to replace them again, or I could just leave it there and uh, using the bolts in the center, secure it, maybe even drill a few bolts, bolt holes down through here so that this last piece, which doesn't have the C clamp above it, is bolted down. That might be what I do if I have to cut it. But first I'm going to see if I can't uh, bend them and get them in. So. Uh, that's the progress so far. Got to get the rest of this wood out. All right, all of the wood is out. I should have uh, mentioned I, at the beginning, I uh, slid the gate off, moved that aside. So now's uh, obviously a good time, if you have any issues with your wiring, to uh, replace that. It's very easy to do when the, the decking is off. Uh, a lot of places sell an entire kit, so uh, don't mess around with that. So you can see a little bit of rusting, surface rust on the support, so I'm going to give them a good coat. Get some, uh, some PB Blaster on these, let them soak, and then I ought to be able to get them out with a, uh, with a vice grip. Uh, the wood from uh, the deck from one side to the other, side to side, is exactly 53 and a half, and end to end is 95. So one inch short of an eight foot board. So either I'll have Home Depot trim off the inch for me, which they'll do, uh, or I'll trim it here. You want to make sure that the wood has some play, some back and forth play, as well as a small amount of space side to side, so that when it inevitably absorbs water, uh, even the pressure treated wood, that it can expand without buckling or pulling against the bolts. Once the wood is in place, what I'll do is I'll lift the jack, I'll jack the, uh, the trailer up, probably put it up on ramps so I can get underneath, and I'll drill up from the bottom through these drill holes through the wood rather than try to figure out where these holes are from the top once the decking is in place. I'll drill up with a small drill because these are threaded, there's no there's no uh, nut underneath here. This is uh, threaded right through the metal. 
So I've got to make sure that I've got the right, uh, I've got to preserve one of these to make sure that I get the right size bolt. This has sort of a, a hex um, safety. As long as it's a flush mounted bolt, I don't know if I have to use the hex, I can just use Phillips head. But I do want to make sure that I get the right size bolt to screw in through the deck and not too deep. This comes out on the bottom about a half an inch. So uh, this is where, at least on mine, the VIN markings are. Also on the axle, there's a label that gives you weight capacity. Uh, once this is put together, the reason I'm doing this is so I can register it in Connecticut and the decking was unsatisfactory, it would not have passed inspection. So you want to take photos of those labels. You'll need that information, weight capacity, VIN, and uh, date of manufacture for your registration. So uh, now to get to those bolts, clean it up a little bit more, then uh, trip to the dump on the way to Home Depot. All of the bolts are out. That gave me a little bit more of a workout than I had expected. Several broke, several were bent, all were rusted. One thing to remember is that the bottom of the bolt, the bottom half inch, uh, is out and exposed to the elements underneath here. So as a result, they get, I don't know if you can see, they get very corroded, uh, even dented. Uh, they don't come out easier even once you get the bolt loosened. Sometimes the last bit, which should be the easiest, was the hardest. Now, this is important. You see the spacing of these holes. This is a 2 by 10 a 2 by 10 This is where the 2 by 8 goes. Then we're back to 2 by 10 2 by 10 2 by 10 It's important when you put the boards in that you do it, and this is, I'm standing at the back, looking towards the tongue. So, from standing at the back, left to right, two 2x10s, two one 2x8, three 2x10s. Two it's important to line it up so that your bolt holes uh, go through the meat of the wood and uh, give you the best hold. So, I was able to get one or two bolts that came out cleanly. I'll take those to the store with me to measure make sure that I get the exact right thread and the right length to go through the boards. Uh, obviously with uh, six boards I'm gonna need 12 of them. You can see <laughs> they didn't all make it but this is trash other than maybe one that I'll take just to make sure that I measure the thread. Alright, I picked up the lumber. Uh, because pressure treated lumber is actually uh, thicker uh, than framing lumber I had misjudged the size of the uh, the little odd man out. I had measured a 2 by 8 by 8, but I really needed a 2 by 6 by 8. So what I have is 5 2 by 10 and 1 2 by 6. Now I had them, uh, the local Home Depot doesn't actually sell 2 by 10 by 8. They don't have that width in that short size. But they had 2 by 10 by 16, so I bought three of them, giving me one extra piece. Had them cut them down to size. I uh, had them cut one to 95 and a half. That's actually too big, so I'm going to have to trim it. 95 is the right uh, measurement, 95 inches. We'll get it exactly down inside the, uh, the channel picked up a can of uh, uh, rust converter. I'll spray this around on the frame before I put anything down. Uh, for me, for my trailer, the bolts are 1 quarter by 20. Uh, these are 3 inch. Uh, the ones that I took out were 2 and a half. Uh, but there's uh, room for uh, the 3 inch ones. So uh, Home Depot did not have 2 and a half in stock. They had it on, you know, they had a place for it, but it was sold out. So. I got a, a five bags, uh, three pieces each, one quarter by 20 by three. They have brass ones. Don't get the brass ones. These are zinc uh, plated. They're going to uh, survive much better. Trailer is uh, ready for some rust conversion. I masked off the, uh, the VIN label. 
also the axle label and the two pegs where the gate goes. While I'm at it, uh, the gate can use a little bit of, you know, the drop ramp can use a little bit of this converter. So we'll give all of those exposed areas. Alright, everything's treated with the rust preventer. Looks good. Alright, I've got, I numbered my my uh, pieces so that once I got them in the order that I liked. I've got number two here uh, all the way tucked in at the bottom. I had thought that perhaps if I levered this I might be able to uh, create enough of a bow to get this in. There's, I don't know if you can see, there's no way that I can bend this enough without it uh, probably breaking. So the idea of bending the wood so that it can snap into place uh, is certainly not, uh, does not appear to be a viable option. So what I will do is uh, cut a notch in the uh, in the C rail and then I'll need to uh, work one piece in at a time. It's a snug fit so I'll be using a block and a sledgehammer quite a bit to get the pieces in. Uh, even though I have one piece that's 2 by 6 I need to cut the opening big enough for the 2 by 10s. So um, I may do that uh, towards the back um, I'm not really sure, perhaps right up here by the front. Um, I have some extra bolts, uh, so whatever I, wherever I drill, I can then put a couple of holes in the bottom of the C-rail. You see it sticks out further at the bottom than at the top. I can drill and tap a few holes, and the last, the last board that goes in, I can uh, just bolt it into place. So, uh, anyway, a little bit of measuring and some cutting. Um, I thought about cutting at the back, um, but in doing that, again, I'll be pushing against the back end. So, right up here by the front, I've made my marks here and here. I've got a grinder. Uh, I'm going to cut just the top out. Now, you can see that this has a spot weld on here, so I actually expect that this, once I cut through, this piece will just break right off pretty cleanly. I'll file it and clean it up a little bit, and then I'll have a place to drop in my uh, my, my boards. Uh, this also has a, you can see, an additional brace underneath it, um, so I have to keep that in mind if I drill for bolts like I had uh, thought I might. So, uh, shouldn't be a problem, but just uh, wanted to have that in mind. All right, we cut out a little bit of the C-channel. I had a little bit of the uh, rust-proofing spray, so I, I coated that where the metal was raw. So, what we'll do is, starting on the left, we're going to put in number one, number two, and then uh, number three is the, uh, the thin one, the two by six. Then I'll start with number five, or board number six, rather then four, and then three should drop right into that slot. So I didn't have a kit to uh, thread the holes, so what I'll do is uh, I drilled the holes big enough for the bolts to just go through, and then I'll secure them on the bottom with lock washers and nuts. That way if I have to remove that uh, this piece for some reason to change wood in the future, it will be a lot easier. So those two holes are drilled, and now I can get the planks in. Well, the pressure-treated lumber is uh, very swollen because it's wet, and it is not budging once I get it into these channels. So to make it easier <laughs> and to use every power tool that I have, uh, you can see where the channel is here. I'm going to uh, lay all the boards out and uh, just sand a little bit of a notch, a little bit of a, a point, take a little off the edge of each one, just about an inch in on both sides. Uh, should make it a lot easier. I won't have to smash them all up with a sledgehammer to get them to move. So uh, that's that. Okay, I've sanded down. 
just a small amount on each piece should make it quite a bit easier to uh, slide them in. I did not do it on number three because number three will just drop into position so I don't need to slide it anywhere. No need to worry about that one. All right, today we're going to finish up the trailer. We're going to screw the boards in. You can see I uh, use nails to uh, make sure that all of the boards are evenly spaced. In addition, space from the frame. That will give them uh, room to expand as they get wet and it will create a nice even seam for uh, moisture, rainwater to go out. And these are the bolts that I'll be using. Uh, when I drill up from the bottom, uh, I'm using a much smaller size bit uh, to do the pilot hole. I want to make sure that I don't use something so thick that I damage the threads uh, that are in, this, in the frame underneath. So I want to go between them, come up through the wood, and then I can use a larger size screw from the top down uh, to make it easier to get the bolts in. But I uh, definitely want to make sure that I do not lose my threads because that's what's holding this in. I've got the trailer up on some car ramps, uh, making sure that I've got uh, plenty of room to work safely underneath. All right, the trailer is finished. It was about $80 in lumber and hardware, can of spray paint. Um, I was able to do the gate with the leftover spray paint. Got all of the uh, bolts down through screwed them in uh, so they're relatively flush these are bolted down in as well if I ever have to I can easily remove that actually I could easily remove at this point all of the boards so I hope this is uh, helpful for you I'll be anxious to see your comments